Hey there, Shauna Karish here coming to you with another delayed, but here we are. Uh, Ask Shauna Answer. Again, we I we had a couple of years crazy and that Jesse and I just been out there now and doing it and back out in there teaching and, and interacting with you guys directly and it's been fabulous. And now we've started our Shauna Karish equine membership site, which is a place we've been kind of scattered over the past couple of years. It's now where we are and where we're focused and we'd love you to come check it out and, and join the community. It's a place where we can talk and progress it with the positive reinforcement regardless of what your level is or where you are. So it is shaunacarish.com where you can come and elevate everything, compassion, performance, and connection. Okay, so this question comes from Kyla. And Kyla says, hello, I've started clicker training with my horse. I love all of your videos on YouTube. Yay, thank you. They have been really helpful in my journey. My question is, I have a Canadian mare who is very lazy. She only puts in the least amount of effort into anything. Going forward has always been an issue, and I gave up doing dressage with her and have been trail riding for many years. The problem is I have always needed spurs and a whip to get her to go in the first place and into trot or canter. I have gotten rid of these tools, and I'm only doing positive reinforcement with a clicker and high-value treats. Good for you. Um, she still does not offer uh, much effort on the ground or under saddle. I get a bit more effort under saddle if there's a lot of green pasture as I use going from one spot to the next and she will offer more for uh, access to grazing for a minute or so. There is no effort on the ground. Um, I will, I try to slowly increase criteria, but at some point, usually I have to ask for trot or a jump or it is just, no way. The treat is not worth the amount of effort. What can I do to improve her willingness to offer more? You know, this is a fabulous question because it's not just her, you know, okay, it's going forward. That's part of it. But, but your big part is the motivation period. I am, you know, I can only make assumptions on things. I assume that she probably has a background where it, if she didn't do it, you know, she was made to do it. Like you said, she she needed, you know, spurs and whips to go forward. And probably she's learned to, that, that you know, she's been desensitized to the cues, essentially. Because if you need a spur and whip, what it means is your cue isn't salient. You know, they don't go, oh, there's a little touch, you know, and I'm going to move forward. So she's kind of learned to, to not put that forward. So as much as using cones with targets in them is a great way to go. But it's not just the cones and target that gets her to go forward. It's the timing of our bridge. You know, when do we click and what are we clicking on? So a lot of times even people use the cones and targets and what they do is they ask them, they will ask them to go to the target and then they click as they touch the target, which is stopping or slowing. You know what I mean? So instead of clicking the going, because what you're really trying to get is more going. So so the timing of that is really important. But a really big key that we find in these pieces is the, and I appreciate that you're wanting to raise a criteria because that's good. You're listening. That's the right thing to do. But in this situation, her criteria is going to be so little because she seems to, from what I can gather, have an aversive association with going forward so and probably worse under saddle but she probably feels like none of it is worth it and think about it with traditional training we are constantly saying no not that no not that no not that we teach them to be experts at escaping and avoiding so now we encourage avoidance behavior which it sounds like you're kind of getting there so what i would do is use early bridges meaning anything so if she just goes and take and you go that's great i'll take that and that's all i'm asking for so back it up with the positive and high value reinforcer but also i would um i would then also not ask her to do more and more and more on top of it so she probably has a long history of this is going to be 45 minutes of you trying to get me to go i would for now now there's times when we got to get them to go because of health reasons you know we've got to get them you know whatever this or that but if you can I would just on the ground and and what's helpful is right now winter is coming up so winter tends to be a time where they have more go than not because of the cool weather so I would see if you couldn't get just a tiny little bit more and and, re, and it could start with liberty leading so doing liberty leading where you're just walking together and there's a podcast for that there's video for that you can go to our you know membership site and get more support with this but it is um just looking for 
like a, an upward transition may just be walking slow to walking a little quicker. And that adjustment to just a little quicker, I'd say that's what I like. And so for her, I'd have a lot of her bridges, a lot of the clicks happening for, for movement, 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 movement. So she starts to feel like any movement is good. And I'm not talking big movement. I'm not talking durational movement. I'm just saying when she walks off with you, draw a lot of attention to that and don't keep repeating and asking for it. I think if you break it down to those little steps and say that's great, and reinforce a ton for that little effort, I think you'll start to, you have to kind of build upon this. But right now she's saying, it's not reinforcing for me to go forward, so I don't want to. And whether that's because it's resulted in corrections and her just finding the wrong answer, so she doesn't want to do it, or it was never good enough, so she doesn't want to do it, or there was something maybe at one point in time, there was a physical thing that was uncomfortable for her. You know, like maybe she had, you know, an abscess. And now she associates the going forward not only with the unpleasantness of the abscess, but in addition that it wasn't good enough. So you always want to start with checking them physically first. Make sure there's not some arthritis or something going on that's causing her to not want to go. But a lot of times you'll also see these horses playing and running in the paddock. So you're like, well, you got that in you. So I think just you always know that's just a thing. Yeah, make sure that that part is, is worked out a bit. But now what you really want to do is be working on her energy and her attitude and her try. It's her try. It's a try and her decision to do the littlest thing. Another thing that can also help too is when you're doing the Liberty leading, do that really, really slow walk and that's really hard for them. So a lot of times they're like, this is really hard to do that slow, slow walk. And then you take a big step. And a lot of times they go, oh, thank goodness. And they have a big reachy step. And I click that and I say, that's it. So whatever upward transition you get, even at the minimal, I would continue to draw attention to that, attention to that, attention to that, attention to that. So she starts thinking moving works. And and is it it's very much a um, you know, you're using the operant conditioning to to say, I, I want movement, I want you to try moving, I want you to try moving, but pretty soon there's gonna be an association mind where she's like, I kinda like moving. So I think it I think it sounds like she probably has some history that has not encouraged this. It's encouraged the stopping and the staying and then not going anywhere, the resisting. Because it sounds more resistant than I'm just kind of not the goiest horse. It sounds like, no, I'm not going. And probably the more you ask, the harder it gets unless you get, you know, really punitive about it. So I hope that that helps you, Kyla. And and again, if you want to learn more, um, I know that uh, we I have the podcast, Equine Clicker 101, it does have the, um, has the, uh, it has one that is about, getting your horse to go forward under saddle or going, yeah, I think it is going forward under saddle. It also has a reverse round pen, fabulous tool, but also the, the community is going to be the, the membership, the Shauna Karish Equine membership is it going to be a great way to go. So you have more access to us, but you're going to have a lot of like-minded people in there chatting and being able to help and share ideas and post videos and do things like that. Anyway, food for thought. So keep me posted. Let's see how um, we're doing with that. And I hope that these tips help you. It is a little ways down the road since I haven't been, um, since I'm just getting back to this. Anyway, so thank you for sending in your questions. And until next time, elevate everything. Compassion, performance, and, and connection. Okay, bye.